All right, then let's get started. Well, first of all, everybody that uh, that is hopping on, uh, I want to say thank you all very much to be here. And you know what? I want to I want to take a moment and say thank you to CABDA. Um, this is a great opportunity. You know, I know that like, talk about an absolutely gong show year. So I want to say thank you to Tyler. Thank you to Jim. Uh, again, I didn't hear if there was an actual introduction. So I'm literally going off the cuff here because I, I know this technology for a lot of us is is new. So uh, but I'm not new to Zoom, but this Excel events thing is new. So I'm going to just jump right in. So, uh, uh, and thanks, Jim. Really, again, he's saying I'm all set. So let's just jump right in. I want, first of all, say thank you, Jim. And thank you, Tyler, and everybody from the CABDA team. Like, talk about an organization that has bent over backwards to keep you guys, everybody in the bicycle industry, going. We want to continue this bike boom on into 2021 and 2022 and beyond. Now, what I'm going to talk about today is preparing for the post-COVID winter. Because guys, okay, this is not about doom and gloom. Everybody who knows me knows that I'm an up guy, high energy guy. I'm all about wanting to make more sales, make an impact on people's lives. I also want to be a realist. It's about being a realist and an optimist at the same time because the IBD, right? The independent bicycle dealer, okay? You guys are so important and it's critical for our communities and it's critical for people that want to ride bicycle and be cyclists. It's, and there's two differences there. But I want to get into this. I want to share my screen with you guys. I've prepared a little something and it is talking about the post-COVID winter. Now, what does that mean? Well, a post-COVID winter is when people actually get vaccinated. Like what's going to happen? Because we couldn't predict what was going on. So I'm gonna share with you guys my screen and we're just gonna jump right into this. All right, let me get this going here. There we go. So can everybody, I'm just gonna ask real quick, can everybody see my PowerPoint presentation on screen? Just give me a thumbs up if you could see that in the chat, that would be great and I'm gonna move forward. Just give me a thumbs up, guys. Just tell me, yes, Joe, we can see it. And then I, I can move forward with this because th there's some really good stuff. I really want to help you guys handle this post-COVID winter. I will tell you that there is a 40-second delay. So sometimes I'm going to have to fill, do a little bit of fill-in just to make sure that you guys hear what I'm saying because it looks good. Excellent. Thank you, David. Yes, here we go. Okay, so this 40-second delay. Let's move with it. So preparing for a post-COVID winter, once again, I want to thank CABDA and everybody affiliated with CABDA, all of the manufacturers and everybody who's put up a booth. That's great. Thank you very much, guys. So no one could have predicted this. Absolutely nobody. A year ago, literally a year ago in February, right, we had heard about what was happening in Wuhan. We had heard what was happening, some rumblings of some kind of virus, but nobody would have predicted that coronavirus that the COVID-19 would have been something that would have driven people onto bikes because of social distancing, an opportunity to be able to, you know, you know, not be in the gyms anymore and be able to do activities outside. Nobody could have predicted this and it became chaos, right? Many of you last year at this time, and even a couple of years ago, you were, and, and let's face it, there's some of you that are on, that are involved with, uh, some Facebook groups or you're, you gather together and there's a couple of face group, Facebook groups that we know of that there's good information and sometimes there's some people that are going to get in there and they're going to be trolls and they're going to be angry. And a year, just a year ago, there were people that were complaining about, hey man, traffic's down, things are sucking. And then a year later, here we are and we've gone from empty to being empty. It's huge, right? So last year we were complaining about not having enough business. Today you're saying, some of you are actually saying, I hate people. I literally see this in some of these Facebook groups where some of you, and the same people, and you know who you are. A year ago you were like, oh my God, my business is sucking. I can't get enough traffic in the door. And now not even 12 months later, these same people are going, oh my God, I hate people. And it's like, guys, I mean, it's a magical time for us right now. It's absolutely magic. And we've got to be able to maintain the magic, right? You're shooting fish in a barrel. 
And I'm not talking all of you, right? I'm not pointing fingers at specific stores. You know who you are. There are people that are order taking. You're not doing sales, right? There are people that are walking in the door, right? They're walking in the door and they're saying, yeah, you know what? Uh, I'm looking for a bike. And people are saying, how much do you want to spend? And they say 500 bucks and you show them a $500 bike. I can tell you right now that you're not doing them any, you're not doing anybody a service. You're just taking orders. And then are you adding line items to your invoice to improve your blended margin? So right now you're running out of inventory, right? And this has happened, guys. People have run out of inventory, right? So their $500 bikes are gone. The manufacturers, their, the, the, the brands, their bikes are gone. So then you jump up to the $7.99 bikes or the, the $9.99 bikes. And here's what happened last, not, not just, like just 10 months ago. Nine to 10 months ago, people ran out of their 499, 599 bikes, and then they took their 799 bikes and even their 999 bikes, and instead of selling them at full price, people started discounting. Because nobody predicted that this COVID thing was gonna be as rampant as it was until it was already too late. And then the margin that you had the opportunity to truly make, you were discounting. And then the supply chain breaks, right? There's no bikes, there's no parts, there's no tubes, there's no accessories. And so now we're shooting ourselves in the foot, which is not a good plan, right? But let, we got to ask ourselves before moving forward, okay, where did the money come from? I mean, it's not like, hey, all of a sudden the globe just turned around and said, I'm going to start riding a bike. Hey, guys, like, let's, let's really think about this. The travel industry alone as one example, okay? I'm going to give you guys three quick examples. So the travel industry according to Forbes, had an impact, a loss of one T, one trillion dollars, over a hundred million jobs lost due to coronavirus, due to COVID-19. That's a trillion. Where did the money come from? Well, the dining and bar industries, right? I mean, bikes and beer, let's, let's, let's face it guys, right? Well, the dining and bar industries, the impact on that, was $675 billion. So now we're at $1 trillion, $675 billion. Let's move along. Where did the money come from? What about entertainment? Things like concerts, movies, sporting events, people that have season tickets. They're season ticket holders. Season tickets to, to football games, baseball games, hockey games, basketball games, whatever your sport of choice, they, those aren't cheap. Like the money came from somewhere and it came into the bicycle industry. We, we are so blessed. Now the question becomes, what's going to happen? Because brands right now in 2021, we all know production has been taken care of since last year. Brands are doubling down on production, right? Not for 2021. The, the numbers are written in stone. It's too late to be able to do anything for this year. Brands are doubling down for 2022. Think about this. As an IBD, as a retailer, you have an opportunity right now to look in the crystal ball. And I'm just going to paint a picture for you. And it's not foolish. This is really something that we need to look at. Brands are doubling down on production, not for 2021, 2022. Brands are doubling down on production. So my question to you is, after COVID, what kind of pressure does that put on you? I'm just asking the question, what kind of pressure does that put onto the independent bicycle retailer? I understand that right now at the moment, everybody needs product. I get it. Today, right. What control do you have over the products that you can get your hands on today? That's one thing. And that could be whether it's new. And listen, there's some of you that are doing a great job with getting used product and refurbishing it and selling it. That Again, it's not for everybody. I get that. Everybody's got a different business model. I'm just giving you information because many of you have been in your lane, literally like this, because you're, you have few people in your store. You're running around like chickens with your heads cut off and, and understandably so. All right, like businesses are going absolutely nuts. You're in the gold rush of the bike industry. I get it. But in 2022, with the fact that brands are doubling down on production, what is that going to look like? What kind of pressure does that put on you? Where's the opportunity, right? Like 
So I'll give you an example. Just recently, if you go check out the National Bicycle Dealers Association website, it's a great couple of podcasts there. It's fantastic information. And the brands that are on are saying, yeah, we're doubling down, man. And, and the belief is we've created this new culture of riding fans. And you know what? I totally agree. There is a new culture of riding fans that every one of us, myself included, we have a responsibility to maintain these relationships with these people so that we get more people involved in riding bikes or cycling. And there is a difference because there's cycling as a sport and there's riding bikes because it's fun. And we have to understand the difference. This idea that some of us are, I'm a cyclist and I don't wanna have somebody on an e-bike or I don't wanna have somebody who's a rookie in my way. We have to start considering the fact that if we want this bicycle boom for the business to keep growing, we've gotta remove these blinders and help ourselves to get more people riding bikes, right? There's an opportunity right now, pre-COVID numbers, there were essentially two categories that were growing. E-bikes, clearly the winner. The electric bike continues to grow rapidly globally. If COVID was not around, the e-bike would still be growing. The other category was gravel, and obviously not to the level of e-bikes. And the opportunity or threat, and you have to ask yourself this question, everybody, is will manufacturers be putting pressure on you or will you have an opportunity buy? And that's, a, that's something that you need to ask yourself. Now, consumer direct brands are also doubling down. We all know this brand. And if you don't know it, I'll tell you this much. Last week, Rad Power Bikes just got $150 million of an investment. This brand has been around since 2014 and they now are over $250 million in annual revenue. They are not small potatoes. And in a very short period of time, we have to remind ourselves, this is just one consumer direct brand. So the question then is, for every time that somebody who's not you sells a bike, how does that impact you? And there, and there, there are ways to be able to sell your definitive differentiating value over a consumer direct brand. And we'll talk about that later. The question is, what happens after everyone gets vaccinated? We know that the vaccines are coming. We know that on a national level, whether you're in the United States, Canada, or in Europe, because I know there's people from Europe that are watching this right now, what happens when people get vaccinated? What do you think is going to happen? What happens when everybody gets vaccinated? Does every thing just go right back to normal? I mean, the hope that people have is, yeah, they want to get back to bars and restaurants. They want to get back to going to see concerts. They want to get back on airplanes on a regular basis. They want to go to resorts. They want to go travel. I mean, I have countless, countless clients in the electric bicycle industry, the regular in bicycle industry, the, and, and outside of the bicycle industry, I do a lot of training outside of this ecosystem. They've told me that, hey, you know what? Things have, the power sports industry is an example. Guess what? These people have come in and they bought products from us because they had to cancel their trip to Europe. They had to cancel their trip to South America or to Australia. What happens when people get vaccinated? Things are gonna start to take off again. And you know what? It makes it difficult because we, we collectively as an industry are gonna start competing for dollars. So what I wanna make clear as a post COVID winter is once someone is vaccinated and people start to reopen and states, cities, states, countries, they start to reopen for travel, right? Uh, concerts, sporting events, and all of this starts to come back the money is going to start to flow in those directions. Now, I'm not saying that the money can't stay in the bike industry. I want it to stay here, guys. But we need to do a better job. We need to do something that's going to separate us from the online guys and separate us from the big box stores because this is the independent bicycle retailer. You guys are the, the IBDs. You guys are the specialists. And order taking will not work in the near future. If the complaints that people had 12 to 14 months ago will be the same complaints 
if you continue down that path. So what happens after everybody's vaccinated? The buying experience is gonna be where you're gonna get success. You're gonna make higher profit dollars, a lot more. Sales experience is the key factor in customer buying. The other question that you have to ask yourself is what am I doing for following up? Am I building on my list now as I get this influx of traffic? Because if I'm not building on my list, right? The old story of your fortunes in your follow-up, but your gold guys, the gold is in your list. And if, again, it's not about being salesy. There's a difference. As I speak to you now, I'm not looking to sell you. I'm looking, I'm imploring with you that you can be a trusted advisor. Play your A game. Be the authority in your space, right? Be the advisor in your space. That's your A game. And following up, that requires being assertive in your space and appreciative in your space. If you're not doing these A game tactics, then you're order taking and you're, you're cutting yourself short. And honestly, you're going you're gonna to give your, your customers a reason to go even on Amazon. The question I'll ask you is, how many of you, and I asked this in Chicago last year, how many of you have ever experienced somebody come into your store, buy a bike, three weeks later, walk in with a box that says Amazon on it with a whole bunch of accessories, which by the way, the same accessories, the exact same brand of accessories are up on your wall. And how many of you have ever experienced that? And last year at the keynote in Chicago, almost everybody raised their hand and they said, yeah, that's happened to me. And this is where I pissed people off. I said, guess what? It's not the customer's fault. That's your fault. And I'm not here to tick people off. I'm here to send a message that your sales experience and the experience that you provide with your customer is an opportunity. There's an opportunity not to be salesy because the mindset has to change. It's that, hey, you know what, Mr. and Mrs. Prospect, Mr. and Mrs. Customer, you just said yes to the bike. You're going to need a pump. Not, do you want a pump? You're going to need a hel You're gonna need a helmet. It's not, do you want a helmet? Like, you got one brain. You got one brain bucket here. Like, you got to make this work. Are you following up with these people? Because I don't want them going online. I want them buying from the local community store. Again, brands are doubling down. You know what the other opportunity is? Holding your service margin. If you're going to talk about what my differentiating value is as an independent bike dealer, as a, as a local community store, it's service. Now, I'm not going to be holding people for ransom. However, you do have an opportunity to be able to increase your service margin and hold it. Because that, dif that is your differentiating difference. That is the value that you have. What's another value that you have? Community. Community, the, these are things that are intangibles. And yet, if you don't know how to speak to the intangibles and you just go spec versus spec, and I've got Magura brakes and they got Magura brakes, right? I've got this Campagnolo and they've got Campagnolo. And you're just gonna go spec versus spec, guess what? It's a race to the bottom. It, it comes down to price. If you get to talk about what dif your differentiating value is, your impact on the community, the impact on the lives of others. And there's a way to be able to do this that is not salesy and it's fun and you get to make more money. Like this is the thing. It's not just money, it's the impact. People will want to pay you for this because people don't want to be sold. They want to choose to buy. But if it comes down to price, this industry as we know it, everyone on this call, everyone on this, this forum at CABDA, it's a different game that we're playing. So what's your priority? You as an independent bicycle dealer, as a retailer, what's your priority? Is it the brand on your store or is it the brands that you carry? And I can't answer that question. I'm just asking the question. Are you in control of your business or somebody else? Is somebody else putting you under their thumb saying, you got you to carry these? Because you do have choices that you can make. Absolutely. And there's opportunity in all of this. I know it sounds scary. It does, it's not meant to be. There's opportunity here. And the time for you to act is right now. Because the fact of the matter is, everybody, and I've been talking to a lot of clients who I'm doing training with, they're making more money than they ever have. You guys are making more money than you ever have. I've got people that I'm doing consulting with 
35 years in the business and their numbers are like, Joe, it's insane. It's we're crushing it. And then when we dig deep, we start to find out that, yeah, and you know what? You're also losing more money than you ever have to. And most of you just don't know it because of the order taking factor or because you're not following up. I'll give you an example. In my experience, okay, and I again, I've only been in the bicycle industry for a dozen years. I've been at it for 12 years. But in the 12 years, I've been lucky enough to visit over 1,100 bike shops. And I do, I measure my metrics. And when I say I measure my metrics, if you can see my screen, I'm, I have a counter. I measure my metrics. I'm, a, I'm diligent on, on metrics counting. After 1,100 bike shops visited, I could honestly write a book that says your follow-up sucks, right? Most stores don't follow up. And it's, it's incredible because there are stores, so some of you that are watching this right now that you sell bikes that sell for three, four, five, ten. $16,000 and you don't even follow up with anybody. It's, 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 it boggles my mind, right? And follow-up does it, it is not a question of being pushy. It's about enthusiasm, the belief that what we have is of value to these people. So what's your follow-up like? And what are you, are you measuring your metrics? Peter Drucker, the famed GM consultant would say, if you measure it, you can grow it. What are your first visit sales? Are you doing name capture? What are your Bob numbers? Now people go, Joe, what's a Bob? Bob is butts on bikes. Are you counting? How many people are getting on butt, butts on bikes? Are you market? What, what are your marketing metrics? Hey folks, how did you hear about us? Oh, I saw you online. I saw you online. The like, guys, that's so vague. You got to measure the metric. Where online? Where specifically? And if they say, well, it's Facebook, mark it down. If you started doing a newspaper ad and then for, for, for two months, you never heard, how did you hear about us? You never heard newspaper. Well, success leaves clues. You know very well, you ain't going to advertise in that newspaper ever again, right? And then are you doing sales sparring? Because I'm a believer that sales training, traditional sales training, it doesn't work. You got to do sales sparring, right? Because remember, people don't want to be sold. They want to choose to buy and you've got to hone your skills like a samurai sword, you gotta keep it sharp. Now, I mentioned Heather Mason here at, at the NBDA. Heather has already, and I have already connected, and Heather, uh, I know that tomorrow you have a panel. Guys, everybody that's watching, go watch that. Heather, it all, like she just started officially two days ago as the president of the NBDA, and go to the website, become a member. Don't tell me you can't afford it, because that's, like, come on. You're making more money than you ever have right now, and there are resources there for you. This industry needs to band together. And again, thumbs up to CABDA. The PBMA, right? And I'm not, like, these, these people are friends, okay? Like, I want professional bicycle mechanics to, do a bit, to have opportunities. And right now, obviously, for the mechanics, it's like, hey, the world's my oyster because everybody needs me right now. I want us to be able to continue to create more mechanics so that we can create more definitive dif differentiating value for us in the industry. So again, I'm saying that you can't afford not to start putting money resources into your people because you've got three choices in your business. You've got three choices. You can either automate, delegate or eliminate. I'm talking specifically to the owners and managers of the business. You can automate, delegate, or eliminate because every one of us that's listening to this and myself included, we all share something here and that's 168 hours a week. And Peter Drucker warned it. He said, the greatest danger in times of turbulence is not the turbulence. It is to act with yesterday's logic. I implore you guys, do not be thinking like we were a year ago after people get vaccinated, because it ain't gonna work. History has proven to us that there were only a couple of categories that, work, that were working. So you gotta change the mindset in terms of your approach. And you've gotta hop on certain bandwagons and you've gotta release certain things that don't work because success leaves clues. When you change your mindset and your skill set, you're gonna be able to dominate. And that's what I want for us as an industry. I want us to start changing the way we look at things. I want us to start thinking of, hey, you know, I, everybody else is against me, as opposed to how can I help my prospect?
Don't think about what everybody else is up to. What can I do to help these people that are here now? And how can I provide value at a profit? I'm letting you guys know that you're allowed to be profitable. Mark Cuban, who you guys know, who's in Shark Tank, his quote is, sales cures all. When your mindset is that of, hey, you know what, we're going to make profitable sales, high margin sales, and we're going to be able to give people value, that's a good mindset. Then it's a question of what are your skills to be able to do that on a repetitive, measurable basis? That's how you're going to be able to dominate. Because guys, winter is coming. Like it or not, the vaccine is coming. And within a year from now, if you think all of this extra inventory that's going to get built, is going to, the demand is going to be the same when people go back to travel, dining, bars, restaurants, movies, their, their football, baseball, hockey, basketball games, and everything else where we've been locked out of. I'm asking you to maybe rethink this a little bit. And ultimately, at the end of the day, if you just do this, if you prepare for the worst, just prepare for the worst and say, you know what, Joe Marku, you're wrong, man. Okay. Do yourself a favor and prepare for the worst. You'll still be at your best. So tomorrow, I've, I've, there's two things that I'm going to finish up here with. Later on today at 3.30, I'm going to show you how to defeat the four horsemen of the cycling apocalypse. All right? How to defeat those four horsemen of the cycling apocalypse. The Amazoners, right? The direct-to-consumers, the discounters, and the purists in our shops. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with being a purist. It's a question of mindset. I'm going to show you that at 3.30 today. And then tomorrow, I'm going to show you how to make a fortune on autopilot. Hit the button in the bike industry. Make a fortune on autopilot in the bike industry at one o'clock. That's right after Heather Mason and her panel are done. So come check it out. And with that, I am done. So I want to thank everybody and I want to thank Cabda once again for allowing me to be here. I think it's a great opportunity. And you know what? I know it's crazy, this kind of online world that we're living in. But there's a huge opportunity for us to be able to make this work. And there are, there are so many other resources available to you, the independent bike retailer, here at Cabda. And there's manufacturers that do honestly have your back. So... I wish you guys an incredible 2021. I want this to be absolutely outstanding, and I want you to be profitable, make an impact in your community. More importantly, I want you to be ready for 2022. You can make decisions right now that will make 2022 and beyond the best year yet. Thanks, guys.